Hello everyone! Welcome to our Reading and Writing Skills class. A pleasant day to everyone! Let's have first a recap of our previous discussion. Last week, we discussed about the different properties of a well-written text such as organization, coherence and cohesion, language use, and mechanics. For this week, we will study about explicit and implicit claims in written text, claims of fact, value, and policy. The following are the most essential learning competencies that we have to achieve for this week. When you practice critical reading, you are not just gathering information. You are also judging the importance and legitimacy of the information you have gathered by judging the purpose, manner of presentation, and holistic development of the arguments presented in the text. Readers interact with the material through critical reading and it leads to significant understanding. To properly evaluate the ideas that you have to gather while you are reading, you must be able to know which information are considered to be explicit and implicit information. So now, let's try to identify the difference between the two. When we say explicit information, it tells about something that is directly stated in the text. It is also stated in the given passage. On the other hand, an implicit information is not directly stated in the text and you have to read between the lines to understand the details that the writer would like to tell the readers. Sometimes we read because we need to perform a particular task after reading. The different kinds of information that we have gathered through reading may be used as a basis for our next task. We can sufficiently discuss our opinion depending on the evidence that we have collected from the text that we have read. Proofs or claims can be used based on the type of presentation or argumentation that you wish to do. Therefore, claims are often explicitly or directly stated in the text. They are explained and justified using evidences. That's why we have to understand what is a claim. So what is a claim? When we say claim, it is a statement that is not considered accepted by all. It is usually related to one side of an issue. It is also called a possession. In persuasive or argumentative writing, the central claim made is called the thesis, which determines and limits the scope of the topic. When we say claim, it may be universified or controversial to a certain degree, and there are three types of claims, which are the claim of fact, claim of policy, and claim of value. What do we mean by claim of fact? Claims of facts relate to the statements that can be verified, no matter how difficult. They are not dependent merely on a person's preference, but can be true or false. A claim of fact is not a fact. It only claims to be a fact. Facts that are universally accepted are not considered claims of facts because there is no more disagreement about their truthfulness. Claims of fact talk about what is or what is not. They say that certain conditions exist. These are pieces of information which are grounded on reliable authority such as science or history. The different types of factual claims which are generally objective are factual or historical, relational causal connections, and predictive. Therefore, when we say claim of fact, it is an argument about a measurable topic, asserts something has existed, does exist or will exist, or debates whether it is true or false. Let's try to read the following examples. Why do we consider these statements as claims of fact? These claims can be refuted using events as proof, and the existence or non-existence of the protocols may be discussed using specific incidences as evidence. Always remember that to support your claim of fact, you have to use factual evidence that is sufficient, reliable, and appropriate. Of course, a critical reader will not easily regard any information as true. 
he or she will examine the basis of the author's claim by asking the following questions. Number one, are the author's claim backed by research findings? Next, did the author use a credible source of information? And third, did the author accurately deliver the data presented by the original source or was the statement a product of his or her own conclusion? Therefore, you have to do critical thinking for you to identify if a statement is a claim of fact or really a statement of fact. Now let's move on to the next claim which is the claim of policy. When we say claim of policy, it argues that something should or should not be done, believed, banned on others. It argues for a course of action. Also, it is called the problem-solution technique. When we say claim of policy, it is all about an argument about an actionable topic. These are specific statements on procedures or laws that need to be modified based on certain issues or conditions. To support your claim of policy, you must first convince the audience that a problem exists and then prove that your policy will fix it by making proposed action clear, need or justification, a plan that must be workable, the benefits or advantages, or consider opposition or counter-arguments. Let's take a look at the given examples. Did you notice the word should and must? This claim demands that additional amendments on a specific policy should be adopted because present circumstances are no longer sufficient. Strong claims of policy are often supported with claims of fact and claims of value. A helpful way to evaluate a claim of policy is to ask if other authors or scholars have presented counter-arguments against the claim. Critical readers evaluate such statements by looking into the author's reasoning or logic behind the claim. The third type of claim is what we call the claim of value. When we say claim of value, it asserts judgment whether it is good or bad, more or less desirable. It expresses approval or disapproval about something. Also, this claim is often influenced by morals, beliefs, and preferences. When we say claim of value, it is all about claiming whether something is good or bad, or the other thing is better than the other one. It attempts to show that something is wrong or right, moral or immoral, or beautiful and ugly. It's all about an argument about a moral, aesthetic, and philosophical value. In order for us to support your claim, you must establish standards that you are using to measure the beauty or morality of your topic. You have to use examples to clarify abstract values and use credible authorities for support. Let's take a look at the given examples. If you can see in the given example, the claim attempt to prove the badness of one idea based on a moral judgment as specified by various standards. It may be religious or even political. If you can see in the third example, it is a judgment comparing and contrasting with other movies, assigning a value whether it is good or bad or the best or worst. Critical readers must prove deeper, look for supporting factual statements and ask by whose standard is good or bad, superior or inferior, before they allow themselves to be swayed by most claims of value. Are there any questions with regards to the different types of claims? Now let's read the following paragraph silently. If you can see in the given paragraph, information such as the tripling of the amount of obesity is used in an explicit manner. Also, the author uses his claim of fact to base his ideas on reliable authority, which in this instance is statistics. The author also uses a standard of providing a better life to children as a claim of value before leveraging a change in policy as stated in the sentence, supporting the passing of the anti-junk food bill in schools and other child-friendly areas. These pieces of information explicitly tell us that obesity is a problem and this passage is implicitly informing us that we can contribute to solving this issue.
Are there any questions with regards to explicit and implicit information in a text and the different types of claims? Well, see you all next week for our next topic in reading and writing skills.